All right, so imagine this. You're creating a new startup smartphone company. Your goal, of course, is to make it huge, right? So you make your first phone, you launch with a bang, you've got a bunch of enthusiasts on board and you're slowly starting to grow this thing. And it starts going well in Europe and in India and a few other Asian markets and you know things are starting to grow and, and go quite nicely. But you notice there's not a lot of pickup in the United States for some reason. Now, there's a few reasons why this might be. I mean, a lot of people already know there's a surprisingly high amount of people who just walk into a carrier store to buy their phones in the US. So if you don't have a deal with a carrier, then things might not go well for you there. And this is an enthusiast only thing. They're selling them online. So that's understandable. But then you get to the stats. And the stats say the iPhone has somewhere around 50% market share in the US, which is higher than the global average, and it is steadily growing every single year. And worst of all, 87%, that's not a typo, 87% of teenagers in the US have an iPhone. And that, that honestly feels like the most damning one because they, that means they got them early. Like these are the, everyone knows about the walls Apple builds up around their ecosystem to try to keep people in the iPhone walled garden but 87% of teenagers, that just means that there's a lot of these people's first phones. These people will be iPhone customers for life, maybe. Like for a lot of them, their friends all have iPhones and if they're gonna get their first phone for the first time, they don't really even consider anything that isn't also an iPhone. It's the only way to get into all the group chats with their friends. It's the only way to get in on all the inside jokes and socializations that happen after school from the FaceTimes to the iMessages and all the things that are just iPhone only. So it's a very baked in thing. It's, it's a very US centric thing for sure, but it is everywhere. So this is why when I made that blue bubbles versus green bubbles explain video, I had to put that disclaimer in the beginning of the video, but that's why half the comments were like, yeah, I live in the US and I see this everywhere. There's iPhones everywhere and the pressure of the iPhone is very real. And then the other half of the comments are like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Why do people care so much about which phone people use? Just, just use WhatsApp. It's super easy. And so that's why that dichotomy exists. But you know, you get the idea. So you are that smartphone company. You're in this position. You're trying to break out in the US. What do you do? It's a real question. And uh, as some of you may have picked up by the title and premise of this video, it's a real company too. It's nothing. This is a company that's made their first two phones now. They've got some accessories. They're trying to break out. And their options seem to be just give up on the US and never, or maybe try to strike a carrier deal and get in that way, but it doesn't seem like it might work. Or just lean all the way in and embrace the actual heart of the question, the number one problem, the biggest asset of the other side. And that's what they're doing. So what Nothing has decided to do, and they, they're announcing this today, is they have built iMessage into their Android phone. Kinda. So they've announced a new app that is gonna come out and be exclusive to the Nothing Phone 2 to start, and it's called the Nothing Chats app. And their goal with this is to literally offer iMessage also on their phone. Uh, now, how does this work, you might be asking. Great question, glad you asked. So I've got it here. This is an app that's co-developed with a company called Sunbird, who has been doing this for a little while in a restricted beta. You might have heard of it, and there's also a couple of others floating around like this. And basically what it does is it lets you sign into it using an Apple ID. So you can just sign up for an Apple account without any Apple products. You sign up for an Apple ID, and then you sign into the app, and it will give you as many iMessage features as possible without actually having an iPhone. So okay, a couple of things about this. One, this Nothing Chats app, when you first sign in, is pretty intuitive. Uh, you go through the setup process to create a Nothing account and then connect your Apple ID. So like I said, you can make an Apple ID even if you have no Apple products, and then you sign in, and then everything just seems to work fine. It's more or less looking exactly like a skinned version of the Sunbird beta app. And so sure enough, when you go to message an iPhone or join any group chat that has a bunch of iPhones in it, things that would not work with an Android phone before, it basically starts off by sending through a virtual contact card asking to merge your contact info with your Apple ID email address, and then suddenly it all works, and you're a blue bubble, and you're texting people with iMessage from your Android phone. 
Also, high quality media is working. So you might've heard of this issue already. This is actually one of my biggest annoyances, but when you message an iPhone with an Android phone or vice versa, and you send like a video or a photo, it's like super blurry because it's been compressed a lot to fit in the file size limits of MMS. But now you actually get that full resolution photo and video treatment as if you're just two iPhones talking to each other, which is actually very convenient. Uh, typing indicators work when another person has been typing for a while. And they're also working on the reactions as well. It's not in this beta that I've been testing, but they say they're gonna have that around the end of this year. But then number two, they're saying that they're launching this as an exclusive app for the Nothing Phone 2, so just this phone, and I imagine future Nothing Phones as well, to sort of give people that option where if they were gonna buy a new phone and they really wanna be in the iMessage group chats and all the iMessage features, and they could only buy an iPhone, they'll at least also have this phone as an option. But then three, this is the big one, and I cannot stress this enough, this could lead to enormous security issues. Signing in with your Apple ID onto a device that you don't own is an enormous security issue, and it's a huge risk to anyone using it. Same thing is also true about Beeper and the others. Because the way this one works, and I've confirmed this with nothing, is when you sign in, with an Apple ID, it's literally signing in on some Mac mini in a server farm somewhere. And that Mac mini will then do all of the routing for you to make this happen. You will never see or actually hold or use that Mac mini. Now, no one else is supposed to be able to use or see that Mac mini or your messages on it because it's all encrypted, but you are still logging in with your own Apple ID on someone else's computer. I don't know how else to put that. Like that on its face is a big enough risk that many people will never even wanna try this. But hey, if you're nothing, well maybe this is just enough to be able to say, hey, we're offering iMessage on an Android phone. Like this, this is a young and crazy enough company that they're gonna try stuff like this. So maybe people will consider a nothing phone in the US instead of an iPhone that everyone seems to just choose by default. I actually talked to nothing about this as I was testing it before this is all going live. And I actually asked Carl Pay straight up, what do you think Apple is going to do or say about this once they find out about it? Because as this video goes live, Apple's finding out about this. Um, and his answer was honestly, Probably nothing, but just because there's a weird timeline we're living in here in 2023 where Apple kind of can't really retaliate publicly because they've already been up against so much antitrust pressure. Everyone already knows Apple is using iMessage and its powers to keep people from leaving the iPhone. But if Apple now like publicly acknowledges this as a competitor in the space that they've got to shut down or something like that, it could sort of shine a light on it in a way they don't actually want. Uh, so they'll probably just quietly sweep it under the rug and maybe just point out some security risks involved with the whole thing. But then of course the other side of the coin is if Apple cares so much about security, then wouldn't they wanna support RCS so that the millions of messages that go back and forth between Android phones and iPhones every day won't be unencrypted SMS? But that's, a, that's another story for another day. But at the end of the day, the real question is, will it work? Will this strategy of offering some iMessage stuff on their phone exclusively actually work for nothing to break out in the US. And the fact is there's a, there's a non-zero number of people who will be willing to try this to give themselves the iMessage, the blue bubble life while still using a different phone. There's probably somebody out there who's like, I might buy a nothing phone, but also all my friends have iPhones, so I guess I can't. And for them, this is real, it's great. But uh, there's a lot of baggage with that and uh, sort of a weird timeline where we're living in now that this is actually a possible thing that could happen. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below if you think this will work. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.